What's up, junkies? In this episode, we're going to break down the Big Ten Media Days and what we got out of it. Lots of interesting stuff from the coaches and players, and we get into it here. 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, he's going to go! Holy cow! Big red junkies. Game by day, game by day, he is better than better! 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 Turn this stadium inside out. Let's have a happy show, huh? Uh, gosh, <laughs> we, not not just because we need a happy show, but we are two days from practice starting. Yes. At least as of the time uh, of this yeah, recording, yeah. fucking exciting. And it's basically four weeks till the first game. Yeah. What it's is Saturday there, what is there night, not but, to be happy about? But Crawford's going to be uh, walking to the ring here in like, I don't know, an hour, hour 15, something like that. Oh, hopefully getting yeah. his ass Plus, kicked. There, were, there were a lot of very um, hard on causing things that happened during Big, Big Ten Media Days. You're right. So, oh, yeah. Outside of the one blip this week, it's been a good week. It, yep. it was Big Ten Media Days, also uh, Viagra Days. That, <laughs> did, you get a, did you catch up on everything? For the most part, yeah. Did you put mustard on everything? <laughs> I mean, it was pretty spicy as it was. <laughs> Fuck off. Did you give give me your, in two sentences, summarize your feelings about Big Ten Media Days? I'm hard. That's it? <laughs> okay. One sentence it is, Jed. What, can I ask why? Yeah. The, and, and not just because I'm sitting across the table from you. The, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Both. I'm glad this is a six foot table and I'm in the middle. Wait, should we get our shots in now? Or? Uh, yeah. oh, okay, let's, fine. Let's do. I mean, we're gonna have more than one. <laughs> well, yeah, but... I'm just saying. <laughs> Cheers to before Jed. You, before Cheers you tell to us, we're going with packages tomorrow. Before you tell us why you're hard. Well, I'm still gonna keep it brief. No shots for you, just just drinks. I mean, I'm just drinking straight whiskey. I was gonna say it's all a shot. <laughs> Pick up the bottle next time. Life's a shot. <laughs> um. It's just, in in general, everything that I heard from the coaches and the majority of the players, it, everybody sounds like they're ready to go for the season. Yeah, I agree. And everybody's got their heads on straight, and and every time that rule talks, I just (sighs) get a big old throbber, so. There was a, uh, my biggest thing, my biggest thing, and I'm gonna, I wanna come back to you, but he said, whenever, every time rule talks. Yeah. It was so different than almost any other coach that was up there. There was, you know, there His was a charisma lot charisma is special. There was, well, and just the way that he, it doesn't matter who's asking him a question. It doesn't matter how weird the question is. <laughs> we'll get there in a little bit. But now, I like that you're laughing now because I, I told you that I there was exactly. a weird question. And I was just like, I was befuddled by the fact that it was even asked. Well, and also he, he thanked her for the question. Yes. But, well, <laughs> deep down inside, he had to appreciate I, it. I know. Um, I mean, you got to love a question that really makes you think. But he engages every single person who mm-hmm. wants to take a moment to talk to him. Yep. It's, it doesn't matter who you are. He is like the motherfucker is as genuine as you could possibly be when it comes to big time celebrity status. When describing himself, shit. he always tries to say, I'm just a regular guy. No, you're not. I'm just Matt. I'm just Matt. That's I get what he it. Says. I mean, hell, I say that all the time. I'm just me. I don't know how to be anything else. So that's basically what he's trying to say. But he's not a regular guy. Not just because he's the head coach in Nebraska football, but how engaging he is, how oh, yeah. charismatic he is, how oh, yeah. re- receptive he is to people, how much he connects with people. You know, I mean, not to get overly personal with myself, but I have uh, one of my mom's brothers is a priest, and he celebrated his 50th year being a priest this year. And he had a mass at Holy Name, the place he went to high school, uh, a couple months ago. And during his homily, he was talking about, uh, not that I'm trying to get religious here, I'm sorry, but um, he was talking about... For the know, non-Catholics out there, that's yeah. a sermon. I was going to have to bring up my, <laughs> my dictionary. <laughs> uh, he was talking about how people like himself that have been in the as a priest or of service in this way for as long as he has, and people talk about, like, what did you build? And a lot of people have, you know, youth centers, churches, whatever, you know, all buildings, basically. And he didn't build any buildings. And I knew exactly where he was going as he was doing this. And I talked to him about that this week when we were at a family reunion. I wanted to tell him specifically, personally, to his face how much his homily hit me. Because I knew he was gonna about to say 
He builds people. He builds connections with people. And that's exactly what my uncle has done his entire life. And that's what Matt Rule is. He builds connections with people. And that's what makes him, everybody around him just feels better yeah. just being around him. He makes everybody feel seen. Yes. And heard. Feel important. That's, what I, that's what I mean when he engages with you, yeah. regardless of who you are. Regardless of how dumb your question is, yes, it's like, he's also not going to treat your question like it's dumb. Yeah, he might not answer it exactly yeah. like you'd expect. It's but like he's a spotlight, he's, and everybody gets the he's, same amount. He's not even going to give you a shrug off answer. Nope. Like a lot of people, they'll still acknowledge your question, they'll still answer it, but it's like that crazy ass question. Sentence, he still fine. thought about it. He, he still put a lot. He put yeah. a lot of thought into it. He gave her a solid three or four minutes. Yeah. Like he didn't really answer a question. <laughs> But have, have we ever had a head coach here that would basically tell him to fuck off? Uh, I can't, you know, I can't think of one. It's so weird. <laughs> one or two in the last no, never. 10 years? You know, never. One or two in the last one or two? Well, I'm talking <laughs> Mike about Riley a couple never good, did. But I'm talking about a few other coaches ago. But yeah. like, one or two in the last two or three? <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike Riley was the ice cream in the middle of a shit sandwich. I mean, a, a, an ice cream sandwich where, where Paul Pelini and Frost were the same person almost by the end of it. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I wanted to hear like just one or two sentences. What was your actual just overall general reaction to to Big Ten media days? Not even necessarily Nebraska. You can't steal mine. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, he I said, agree with he you. He has three words. <laughs> He's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I won't necessarily use the exact phrasing that I used with you guys the other day when I was out with you and told you how much, every time Rule talks, I, it makes me want to do something. But. Um, was it jizz in your pants? I don't remember exactly no. what you it's said. It's more aggressive than that. We don't <laughs> oh, need yeah, to, uh, we just, <laughs> we don't need to yeah. like, yeah. But we, I said it in a bar setting, so that's, you know, I don't need to repeat it here. It's so much different than this setting <laughs> Yeah, here. so much different than this setting yeah. where we're drinking and we're having just fun. not be in a bar. Yeah, exactly. As, as, you, as you jingle your ice ass. around your cup. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my buddy, my buddy Joe from work, he actually mentioned. He goes, he goes, I love it every time you guys like say something fucked up to each other, or, like you do whatever, and you just hear the ice rattle. In the background. <laughs> <laughs> What's he, all about, he's, man? He, he goes, and I was like, I know it's there, but I don't know if people actually notice that stuff. And he's like, it's every time. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. No, there's there's a part of me that wants to be surprised um, at how not just rule was. Jeff Sims, Ethan Piper, um, and Luke Reimer was, with everything that they said in as many of the interviews that I was able to watch, I, I was driving through the state of Nebraska on Thursday when all this stuff was going on, so I've been trying to catch up. There were so many. Yeah. So many. I know. <laughs> I've never seen that many. I don't think that I watched enough or watched it all. So I've never seen that many. First of all, it's yes, like we've everybody. already talked about Frost didn't really like the media. Mm -hmm. He didn't like to answer questions, none of that stuff. I don't think he really liked the kids doing it. I also don't know if we had anybody that was really capable of doing it before the way that we've, we're seeing some of the guys or do it now. excited to talk about what was going on. Well, mm -hmm. there's just very clearly some educating that's been that's been going on with the kids that he took. You know, he, he took guys that he trusted he could put in front of a microphone and they'd say the right stuff and do the right things. And that's I, – I don't know that that's necessarily a – coach them up for this specific event. I think that has a lot to do with, you know, we've talked about it before. Look at Danny Kaling. He's a prime example of the type of guy that they're going after that walks and talks and sounds just like the rest of the coaching staff. So, so it's it, like I was saying, there's a part of me that wants to be surprised at the, not necessarily the words that I heard, but just the way that people were, answering questions and everything else. Yeah. But kind of going back to our show, our grandpa rule show where we were dissecting the first eight months of coach rule. I really shouldn't be surprised because this is what he's creating. This is what he's building. And yeah, there were some, you know, kind of coach speak, if you want to call it that as far player speak with the players, but it just sounded different. I didn't feel like that many of their answers were actually as rehearsed as I usually yeah. do. The, the way that they were able to do it, um, the answers that came across any microphone that they were in front of. It all seemed genuine. Yes. It also all seemed easy. Yeah. It didn't mm -hmm. seem forced. It didn't seem like, oh, I got to make sure I say the right thing yeah. or I'm going to be in trouble. 
it, it was go it talk seemed, to him. It seemed easy. Not go talk this to is, him and you better say the right fucking thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. this 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 seemed it, like... It didn't seem rehearsed. Hey, I'm going to bring these guys along because I know they're going to do all right. They're in leadership positions on the team, and people want to hear from them. But on top of that, I trust to put them in front of the camera because we've been doing the right stuff. Mm-hmm. They've been doing the right stuff. We're all doing it together. So and what was your opinion of it? Yeah, give us your two sentences. Honestly, my, kind of going back to our Grandpa Rule show, I wasn't surprised from a, from a perspective of, oh, wow, he hasn't done this before. Because he's, like you said, he's been doing this. This is what we've seen. This is what we can kind of expect. I think the biggest difference, or my biggest reaction is, he's different. He does it different. He's doing it his own way. Because I, I watched everybody else. My big thing was the big, you know, I watched every most coach of gets the other coaches, 15 but... minutes, get up here and do it. Mm-hmm. The first, I, I watched, I'll, I'll say I watched most of them. I didn't watch all of them. Yep. I was I was super keen to see PJ Flex, obviously because of the stories that had just broke. Yep. Um, but I was also really into um, seeing Luke Fickles. And, you know, when a lot of what Luke Fickle said Sounded a lot like stuff that Rule talks about. He didn't sound near as polished. He didn't sound near as genuine with a lot of the stuff that he said. Uh, it's his seems a little more of the old school coaching style, even though we know, you know, Rule is more old school coaching. I think I understand what you're saying, but I don't know that I would use the word not genuine or whatever. It's just different. I'm not, I'm not saying it was I'm not saying it was not genuine. I'm saying it just didn't hit as genuine like when Rule talks when I say he's so genuine, I mean like he's down home as fuck. Yeah. Now just out of curiosity, does it not hit that way because you don't hear as much from Fickle because of where we live? Or is it I think it's just the charisma no, behind I'm how just Rule talks. It's it's really about the engagement. Okay. There was a big difference in you know, like like I said uh, when I first like when it was live, I was I was shooting you a message. I was like, mm-hmm. I was like, all these other coaches are talking forever when they get up there, and then you know they're required to take I think four or five questions, but it's super quick stuff. Yeah, I was in like and, North Platte when you were texting me all this stuff. I'm like, I'm not watching it, yeah. damn it. And they're like, <laughs> but like like PJ Fleck got up there and he talked and talked and talked and talked oh, and talked God. and talked and talked. And and I feel like Fickle, you had a lot to get out. Fickle who who, who did, would have thought that of of all the converse, of all the talking that Matt Rule likes to do. Who would have thought of all of the Big Ten coaches, he would give the shortest opening speech? Dude, that's that's where I'm going with this. Because <laughs> Fickle was also talked and talked and talked, and he talked about different players and the way people are reacting to, you know. Uh, he actually kind of sideways addressed the whole, you know, losing, uh, what's his name, the uh, Jim Leonard, yeah. the, the head co- or the uh, D coordinator, <laughs> and, um, you know, the players that had talked about leaving if he didn't get – Retained as the head coach, things like that. He kind of sideways addressed that. But he talked forever, too. And I just thought it was so cool because Matt Rules, you know, as we've seen, he can very easily put together a, a half-hour speech and be just fine. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he can rattle it all off. Without even thinking. He got up there. He was like, hey, I got to thank the right people. Um, you know, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to get up here and talk to you guys. What do you got for me? Mm-hmm. That was basically what he said. It kind of gave me the impression that he was excited for the questions. He yeah. was, and the, and the questions that he got, even like, <laughs> we're here, we'll talk about it now. The fucking weird ass question from the local writer. It was a Wisconsin person. I said, I said local okay. writer in Wisconsin. Oh, I'm That's sorry, what she sorry, was. I cut you off. I'm she sorry. was very clearly from Wisconsin. Like I said, she sounded like she just got out of, like she just got done milking a cow and she walked into the fucking Big Ten media. Did days. she have her Bible with her? Yeah. I don't know. It was it was a weird question. The, the way she went about it was what it was. And she I didn't even phrase really, it wrong. I didn't even really understand what she was looking for. And I think he The tragedy of, that happened after the prayer was the day after they prayed. So it's like, what did the prayer have to do with what happened? I, I think she was tragedy. looking I for I, a... I, I misunderstood it. I thought it happened before. No, she said it, it happened 24 hours after, you know, like, or they prayed 24 hours before and all that. Yeah, I, I, think, I think she might have been mistaken because I think yeah. it happened before. I don't know. She, she was. I, it was a weird question. No matter I remember what, they made so. a deal out of it on TV. I felt like she was just looking to see what kind of religion he was going to bring into the football. And at then Nebraska. he brought all of the religions in and said, "We are all in it, this together." It, I loved how he did it. Yep. He's like, "I'm here to coach the men. I'm not here to impose my beliefs on yep. them. We're we're here to be a team together, and that's what we're going to do." And you know what? 
you, you haven't watched it yet, and I hate to bring this back into it because we're talking Big Ten Media Days, but the Damon Benning interviews with him, that mm-hmm. whole series, you know, we, we've already we already talked about it in the last episode. Did, a, did an eight-part series with our partners at Heard At. Um, he's awesome. It's super in-depth. It's not really... It's not really coaching stuff. It's not really football stuff. It's about Matt Rule. Like you yes. get to learn a lot about his, like how he came up. It's very personal about his his experience with his his dad, especially who was a preacher, as everybody knows. But he addressed in that specifically. It was kind of it was kind of sideways asked by Damon. Um, you know, how religious are you? Are you are you bringing this? And, and he was basically like, you know, we're not we're not pushing religion on anybody. We're not, I'm not here to talk about it. And he talked about how his dad can have an hour long conversation with you about it. And he's going to, I think he's he gonna, said 10 hours. Yeah, but yeah, he did actually, I think, but he's, he's like, and he's, and he's never going to, never going to even bring it up. Like it's not, yeah. it's not something, you know, a lot of pastors, <clears throat> preachers, uh, you know, clergymen, whoever mm-hmm. it is, churches, people, they try and smack you in the face with it yep. nonstop. And I'm religious. You're religious. I don't know if Jed's religious or not. We've never even talked about That's it. That's cool. But, but it, not that it's anybody's business, but no. it's not part of football. It, at least it's not yeah. unless you want it to be. And he basically was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. prove that I, you know, I am what I am through the way that I live. And, and I'm going to let everybody else do it the way they want to do it's it. It's connecting with people. Yeah. You know, one, one of so, the big things that he said in that answer to the lady's dumb question. Yeah. He said, "Wouldn't it be a great world if we could just disagree I and still it. be okay with fr- yeah. you know with everybody? Like you talk about religion wouldn't, stuff. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't it, his exact quote was? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't the world be better? Would, wouldn't the world be a better place if we could all just disagree? Yeah, or learn how to disagree and be accepting of each other. Yeah, yeah. like you know, we are great friends here sitting here. We disagree on whether some things on about religion. We disagree on some things about politics. You know, the hot button yeah. things, whatever else. Yeah, country music." Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. We, we could disagree about stuff. how a football game goes. But. So it's like, but we're great friends. Yeah, because it's because yeah. I know how you guys are peep, as people. You know how I am as a person. I'm a huge asshole, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real about life. We're again, all huge assholes. <laughs> again, it's about how we are as people. We can disagree and we can just yeah. move the fuck on. And the thing that I love about Coach Rule is that not only does he not push beliefs yes. or anything on him, but he doesn't put any of them down. No. He's just, no. He, I'm, I'm here to do the football stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm here to do the growing men as men stuff. Yep. And that was, just, that was his big thing was, you know, I, I'm, I, how they, perf- what did he say? He said, he said, uh, who they are as people is a lot more important than who they are as players on the field. Yes. Yeah. And it, that's, you know, that could sound to some people as a hokey, oh, blah, blah, blah statement. Of course. The, it way, sounds like he, the way he says stuff, the way he's doing things, it seems as legitimate as anything else. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. What, so we basically all took 15 minutes to talk about the two sentences. We were, we were breaking this down. But, you know, the, the weird question aside, looking at all the other stuff that he did, all the little interviews and things that he did, I thought the most exciting thing was the fact that he straight up was acting like it was all fun. Yeah. It was all fun for it, him. It felt like it was fun this for was, him. This was not... This Didn't was feel like not, he was acting. You know, that was that was Scott Frost. Everything was a drag. If yeah. you're putting me in front of a camera, fuck you. It's a drag. Like, I'll do it because it's part of my contract. contract. Camera. I have to. You, you put yeah. a microphone in my face yeah, for whatever reason. Yeah. You put something else in front of his face, it's going to drag that too. Never mind. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Jesus Hold on. Hold on. Let, me do, let me do this. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for, for those of you gentle people at home that don't understand what Matt was referring to, it's cocaine. <laughs> it's uh, cocaine. It was too easy. You guys yeah. just set it on the T for yeah, me. All I had to do was swing. Set on the T or the mirror, bro. <laughs> Let me pull out my credit card. Hold he, on. Yeah, he, 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 put, he handed me a hundred dollar bill on his credit card. What the fuck else was I supposed to do with it? <laughs> wow. Man, just like that. There's warning labels on this yeah, episode. No shit. Shit. <laughs> a cease and desist as well. Oh man. <laughs> Jesus. I don't even remember what we were talking about. <laughs> Scott, I'd like to formally say I do not know what that white powder substance was on your nose. It was definitely <laughs> could have been powder, anything. Right? All right, let's make a hard right turn. 
Hard right turn. <laughs> I, I think one of the other big talking points was respect of the program. That yes. was what, that was, like... That was the biggest. Respect was brought up, like, all the freaking time. In every single one of his interviews. Yes. It was, it was, and it was not about, we demand respect. It was, mm-hmm. we need earn. to earn the right to demand respect. It wasn't, we need to earn respect. It was, we need to earn the right to demand respect. Going back to the Damon Benning thing. Being respected. He, he brought this up at Media Days, but also going back to the Damon Benning thing. He literally was like, it's written on our stadium. Day by day. Yeah. He said it multiple times in that Damon Benning piece and also at Big Ten Media Days. Earning that day by day mentality of getting better and earning yeah. that respect. In the deed, the glory. Yes. And that's been written on our stadium for more than 30 years. A long time. Now, my question about the respect thing, though, is because uh, I think on our day, on our countdown to kickoff thing that we keep posting every day, today was the 33 straight years of um, nine win season, nine plus win seasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I shared that you did. Yeah. And you talked about how that getting back to something like that. So when he continues to bring up respect of the program and all those things and earning that, what does that mean or, and, or look like to you guys? Is it a win total or is it just how it looks on the field or what is it for you guys? Well, I think, I, I, I guess I would have to kind of defer to what he actually described it as. Because he, he didn't just say those things. Yeah. He actually described it. He, he talked did. about it. He did. And he talked about how it's not necessarily just a win total. It's about playing the game the right way. Yep. It's about playing the game the way that the fans have expected it for a long time. And, you know, I think some of what he's doing, you know, you, you said something. I don't remember exactly what you said, but he made a comment. Some, something to the effect of, I'm not just the player's coach. I'm the fans coach. I, I am yes. the coach. Yep. And I need he's to help. He's the state's coach. I need to help everyone. And he should be because he's the highest paid employee by the state of Nebraska. Yep. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's I think I think it needs to look respectable on the field. We need to stop. <laughs> One of the funniest things of the entire Big Ten media days was when Trev Alberts made a comment in a side interview. I did not get to oh see anything God, of Trev Alberts I have to yet. show you that. Uh he he was – somebody asked him about um, the possibility of future uh, off-site games or future uh, – I've seen ne- this quote, yeah. Yeah, neutral site games. And he was like, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at stuff. We're, we're all those things. And Trev's always great in front of the camera. You yep. know that. Um, and, and somebody was like, yeah, I'm not going back to – I think Sipple was like, yeah, I'm not going back to Ireland, right? And he was like, actually, I was, I was really enjoying Ireland until, you know – The game. About, about a about, uh, quarter of the way through the third quarter, right? Something like that. And he was instantly referencing the onside kick. <laughs> yeah. And it was like a fucking, like, hey, hey, Frost, while you're down there, let me fucking throw some more dirt in your face. It was, it was kind of that way. He almost, he almost threw it out there. Um, but, you know, I think that the biggest thing has to be get rid of the dumb mistakes. The dumb mistakes that seem like things that you could see happening at a D2 school or a small, yeah. you know, Colorado prior to this year. You I'd, played yourself. Yeah, stop stop fucking up just to fuck up. Yep. Do things the right way. Play the game the right way. On and off the re- field. Re- on and off the field. Do things the right way, not necessarily schematically. Like, Nebraska fans want to see us run the ball. Nebraska fans want to see this. The fullback. You know, you know it's yeah, the fullback. You know, it's, it's funny. Rule actually made mention of the fact that you know, Nebraska fans bitch about, we don't run the ball enough. We should run the option. We need to bring back the fullback. They don't talk enough about the fact that defense wins championships, and defense is something that we were always known for. We haven't had a good defense in a long fucking time. Mm-hmm. We had good stats two years ago on defense, which is why everybody thought last year was going to be awesome. It was a, it was a fugazi. It was, it was all fake. And so I think getting back to the basics – Stop making the bonehead mistakes that cost us games. And let's just go out there and do some things that look good on the field. Yeah. You start doing those things, they will equal wins. There's a lot of games that we've lost in the last five to ten years that just not beating ourselves would have won games. So figure that part out first. The wins are going to come. Mm-hmm. Matt, what, what does respect look like to you? I mean... Obviously, I think the win-loss columns are a part of it. Of course it is. But 
it it it's a hell of a lot more than just that. It's ex- it's everything that BJ already said. It's 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 not beating yourself, but beating your opponents. It's also being the kinds of coaches and players that people want to see on the field. I, I mean, or you're at off the, the field market, or at the bar, exactly, or you're, at the restaurant, or you you got you got players out there who are you know walking grandma across the street type stuff. Not mm-hmm. not out there being assholes to people saying respect me because I'm a Husker football player, but the opposite. I respect you even more because I'm here to be a Husker football player type stuff. It's funny. You said the walking grandma across the street. He, he, uh, one of not on the big podium, but down below at the table where he was doing like his 40 minutes in front of more local type media. He had brought up how he was in, uh, I don't remember maybe Seward or some small town, Nebraska, um, and this 98 year old woman came up to him and wanted to have a picture with him. And she, and he was like, you know, I felt like I would, should want to have a picture with her. And like, I should go get her lunch. <laughs> like I should take it to her. <laughs> exactly. should, like, don't come to me. I'll come to you type thing. You know, that sort of yeah. like, <laughs> look at how far you've come. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I think just instilling that in the players. Did you know Bob Devaney? <laughs> <laughs> well, may, maybe in a certain way, but oh, hell. <laughs> hell, he she might have known Dana Bible. I mean, like, it's just... <laughs> all right, now Jen's good. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. So that that's really what the success looks like to me. It, it's, yeah. it's about going and becoming a better all around program again. Yeah, I mean, it, a lot like with both what both of you guys were saying. Rule talked about it a lot where in the fourth quarter of so many games over the last handful of years, we were right there and we were one, maybe two mistakes away from winning a lot of those games. We all know that. And that's part of why he's he hasn't necessarily addressed it directly, but that's part of why he keeps making the comments like we're ahead of schedule. Yep. We're not in the same, you know, just simply comparing because and, and that's one thing that I actually really love is he's not just running away from the comparisons. Hey, I did this at Baylor. Hey, mm-hmm. I did this at Temple, and I'm cool with you comparing those. But we're ahead of schedule because those two programs were in absolute shambles. We were 15 plays probably away from having winning records the last two seasons. Well, and he also said specifically with those two programs setting them up, if he would have had the transfer portal and all of those things that he has now to be able to sign as many players as he was able to this year. They might have been better in year one at Baylor. Oh, yeah. Because he, he was like, I, I had like four players, and then I signed like 20, four players that were going to stay with me, and then like 28 players that he signed in this first year. If he would have been able to sign more specifically as transfer portal guys, he's like, we would have been much better in year yeah. one. Like, we would have been ahead of schedule, like what you're just saying. It's, it's, it's all of it. He's saying well, that they're ahead of schedule because everybody wants to compare year one at Temple, year one at Baylor, and what they had. They had like three wins total between the two teams in year one. He's saying that they're ahead of schedule because of the transfer portal and bringing him the players that they were able to do with the rebuild that he has. That's why he's saying that they're ahead of schedule. The other thing that I don't think I've heard anybody talk about yet, and I this actually just kind of hit me when you were talking about that. <coughs> the other things about Baylor and Temple that is different about here now is at Baylor and Temple, first of all, Temple... Not a place anybody yeah, fucking it, thinks it's to go. A temple. I really want to go play football at Temple. Yeah. Well, some people might. Yeah, some people. Yeah. Maybe. I don't. Their mom I, works there, there. There was at least three people. Yeah. It, it, we'll, we'll say at least three people in all of history have wanted to go play. Those football people, at I do not want at Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> There's <laughs> there there were no, there were no people that wanted to go play football at Baylor. After what went At down time, there, no. and no parents exactly. of any of those kids wanted that. wanted their kid, and, yeah. and and that to be slapped on their resume. Oh, oh, you went to Baylor? Didn't they just yeah, know, cover yeah, a bunch yeah. of rapes? Yeah, yeah. Like so, think about from a recruiting perspective the types of kids that he had to get to say yes to him. Yeah, they weren't probably the the same quality of people. Or coming from the same situation that he's able to get right now. And I'm not saying Nebraska is the most attractive, but Nebraska is still a big brand. Nebraska is not coming off of a scandal or out of a situation where they've literally never that's, been that's good. That's another thing. The the way that our program is in such shambles was a slow burn as opposed to the fires of an earthquake. Yep. Yes. It's not the same thing. But that, and, to me, 
means that his approach is probably going to look a little different too. Well, I think he a he has this grace period. He has at least the first year as a grace period, and this was something Trev Alberts actually made a comment about that, about you know, hey, we understand year one's going to be year one, and you, you you cannot necessarily judge progress just by the wins and losses mm-hmm. column. But he also said he followed that up by saying year two, we're going to be expecting to see some things, and and I think. That's one of the biggest things about Trev Alberts that I think I've come to respect so much more because we had conversations. We weren't sure about him coming in as the, as the mm-hmm. AD. We knew he could make the hard decisions because of yep. what he did what he at did UNO. UNO. Yep. But what he did at UNO made me hate him, made made a lot of people hate him, me made too. Jed fucking hate yep. him. Uh, you know, you, you shut down a fucking successful football program. And year wrestling. after you year. You kill a very successful wrestling program. Yep. For what a basketball arena, like hockey, to, uh, a hockey arena, things like that, like, and you know what? Whatever he did at UNO, fine. But the guy has shown nothing but extreme professionalism and the ability to do exactly what he says he's going to do. So far that he's been in Nebraska, and, and I'm, it, I'll he, just say he this: does and not I'm not have lip service. That's I'm not for trying sure. to go down no. a rabbit hole. Ultimately, he made the correct decision for Omaha. But it was still a tough as fuck oh, decision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. Ultimately, as as Again, we can see data so coming in, people off. It, Again. Was, it was the correct decision. No but, lip service. It's yeah. you know what? This is the actual facts of the matter, yeah. and this is what we want out of it. Yep. And then he goes and gets it. What, one of the other things that I loved what Rule said was he said all of us at Nebraska are a four and eight team from last year. Yeah. He said. The that, ne- this the, is actually from the David Benning interview. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, he, well, he, it all came out at yeah, the same yeah, time. Yeah. We're going to lump it yeah. in because it was great stuff. He's it like, was a great interview. He's like, all the new coaches were a 4-8 and eight team. All the new players coming in and a transfer portal, they're a 4-8 and eight team. So that, and that's kind of one of those things. Like, and I think back to the second scrimmage that I went to and where he yelled and screamed at the players like, this is why you guys were 4-8 <laughs> and eight and 3-9 and nine the last two years and haven't made a bowl game in five years. He's not just talking to the individuals that have been there for many years. He's talking to the entire team. The Every, everybody is all in one here. It, it was just kind of he weird. He said he had those conversations with them before they made the decision. Like, MJ Sherman it was had weird. that conversation yeah. with him before he decided to come here. It's super weird to hear, like you just said, MJ Sherman, Eric Gilbert, Jacob Hood, three guys from Georgia. <laughs> Georgia. They national just, champion. They just come off of a national champion. By the way, you're, four, you're a four and eight. You're on a four and eight team. You are like, <laughs> a four and eight player. <laughs> no, but, but you know what? That's all all in one, one for all, you know, all that stuff. Mentality. This is everybody is a group. Nobody is singled out one way or the other. It doesn't matter if you're new or old. We are all one. And that sort of a mentality that he is feeding through this program is what is going to be so beneficial for us. I love it. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. You- yeah. No, go ahead. You definitely don't want players on the sideline. You were four and eight last yeah, year. It wasn't I me. I won a national title. It wasn't title. me. I got this ring right yeah. here. That, like, that's yeah. just no. it, exactly what he's doing. It's yes. all about cohesiveness. It's all about these are your brothers. Mm-hmm. This is what we're doing now. Well, and, you know, not to not to take away from what you just said, great points, but going back to Trev Alberts, another thing that he said, he was asked directly, you know, we're eight months later, we're eight and a half months later, Seeing everything that rules out here talking about and doing right now, you know, I think I think somebody had just made the comment, you know, this looks different, and he was like, he was like, yeah, I actually just had a colleague come up. It sounded like either another AD or maybe another head coach type had just come up to him and was like, how the fuck did you get all this media out here? You guys were four, you had four wins last year. It's in Nebraska. Well, yeah, but still, like. He, he, but it's he, not just that. He, he went into then talking about how there's so much excitement around the program. Mm-hmm. It is also Nebraska. This is what we do. We're, you know, we're always under the microscope, regardless of how bad things have been. Yeah. There's always the hope and the expectation that things are going to be good. I also, just at that point, I love that he was willing to say, I think we have some expectations for year two. Yeah. Well, he, he made it clear there was expectations for year one to show progress. Right. You start. You make jokes about the onside kick in the Northwestern game specifically, and you and you then go on to talk about how, hey, look, wins and losses might not be where we see the progress in year one, but by year two, we're going to expect to see that. 
Those are huge things. I'm just I'm saying but, from a fan from a fan's perspective, I'm like I want to give them a full four or five years to see what they can really do with the team. And it, it's it's no, one of the re- it's one I of the reasons. I want to see something in year two. It's one of the reasons why I keep saying year one. I have zero expectations. I'll give predictions, but I have zero expectations for this program because sure. it's a process, and it's a process. You know. I know the previous staff loved to say it's a process. Hell, two staffs ago, or three staffs ago, they loved to say it's process. Been a process for the last twenty fucking years. Yeah, ask but the Sixers how that's this going. is actually a process that we can see, like <laughs> the possibility, like we can see the sun rising on the horizon. This is actually a process that is possible. This is what we're getting to. Here's the thing: it's more than the a process, process has been it's possible the whole time. We're still talking about sunshine and rainbows until we see play on the You're field. Right. So I'm not getting ready to go walking down that yeah. fucking golden That's yellow brick road. For you. I'm not. Well, I'm just. It, yeah, you're that right. is what I'm Matt, Matt, you're right, because he is Mr. Sunshine and Rainbows. I am. I but am. I am. I'm going to have a little bit different tune this year. I think I'm going to be a little more critical because I'm going to be able to be. I always had to be the positive except, one last year. Except in our season preview, pre prediction show, you're probably going to say eight or nine wins. But yeah. Maybe I think that's harsh. Yeah. <laughs> Back to what I was trying to finish saying it with Trev Alberts. That he was specifically asked, you know, all seeing all this stuff, seeing how things are going, you know, is Rule the guy you thought you hired? Because he, he had been asked a couple different questions in a row that kind of led to, to this, you know. And he's like, you know, I have, I have to work on my relationship with my boss, Ted Carter. And and I think it's important for Rule to be working on that relationship, and he's doing that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can, I think it's cool as shit that the last two concerts I went to was Chris Ableton at CHI here in Omaha, and then I was, previously was at Blake Shelton down in at Pinnacle. Both this times. The second country music reference for the, yeah, I know, the it's show. Weird. <laughs> but both, both times, both times, <laughs> guess who was there? Tweeting about it mid concert. Matt Rule. Matt Rule. Guess what I saw the next day? Tweeting about it from. Oddly, the same viewpoint in the same suite. Trev Albert's throwing that stuff out there. Like, these guys are spending time together Mm -hmm. personally. It's not just a Nebraska events thing. And and the way that he talked about it was, you know, it's important to work on those relationships, and it's the underlings. Like, he made it sound like it's the underlings responsibility. I'm not going to force the relationship on him. He's doing the work just like I do the work. And the, the amount of respect that he talks about, like I said, he's throwing these sideways jabs, which for such a nice guy like Trev always presents himself as. To throw the sideways jabs that he throws about Scott Frost, it's almost like they're players again. You know, it's like, it's like, hey, look, I, I didn't want to keep him. I had to keep him for an extra extra half a season. And by the time it was ready to go, it was so ready to go that I was like, get the fuck out. The, the one quote that I did hear from Trev was in asking about expectations for year one. He said, well, you saw the play on the field the last couple of years, right? Like, that was it. <laughs> it's like, huh? I mean, yeah. how hard is it going to be to see better, like, see improvement over that, though? Yeah, low bar. It's The, the, the bar is hope, very hope, low to hope, show hope, improvement. Hopefully not. You're hard. right. Well, you're right. I right. guess you're you're right. <laughs> Hopefully not. But all you have to do is manage a game like most people who have played a little bit of Madden could manage mm-hmm. a game. Yeah. And that's just in the game. It already looks different. Yes. As as we're hearing from other coaches or ADs or, you know, all of that. And I think it goes back to it's not just a process for these guys. It's actually about the culture that they're building. It, yeah. It's not just about the job. It's about the lifestyle. And I think that's well, awesome. And the the process and all that stuff, we, I hate, just like you said, 76ers, fuck that. The, trust the process yeah, and all been, that stuff. They've been doing they've been the, process the process for, for like, a decade, and they yeah. ain't fucking done nothing for them. But you're speaking Greek to me with NBA, but okay. Yeah. No, I, I think something cool. At least that, current NBA. Also, I know we had the NBA conversation speaking, off the air. Speaking but, Greek to them, too, is <laughs> the point. He talked about it in the, in the Damon Benning interviews again, was when he talked about, you know, I got... I have more people on this roster than I've ever had anywhere else by mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. Even at Baylor. And he said, it's, I had, I went to, you know, coach Osborne and I wanted, I wanted him, you know, give me the secrets. You've been here. You've yep. done it. Give me the secrets. Yep. And he goes, 
He goes, well, you know, Coach, Coach no, he Osborne. He said that on the BTN panel. Oh, that was on the BTN yeah. panel. You know, you know, Coach Osborne. He's <laughs> he's not, he's not going to talk about the games. He's yeah. not going to talk about scheme. He's not going to talk about any of that. No, stuff. he was talking about the the giving out the black shirts. That's what that he, was. He was, but but yeah. he also he also referenced the fact he, he's going to talk about practice. Yeah, he's talking about practice and the way practice. that they did stuff. Talk and it sounds practice. interesting to me because it sounds like. They practice in like segments and stations so yeah. much more, and it's not even something he's used to doing. But he made mention of Tony White being so interested in the way that they're practicing, and that he's never seen practices so hard and all these things. And you know, maybe this is all fluff, but hopefully, you know, there was nothing easy about being a Nebraska Cornhusker football player in the nineties. There was no. nothing easy about Especially any in practice. Of it. There, there was nothing easy about any of it. And Every single one of them will say practice was the hard part of their week. The games were easy. Exactly. And, and, and you know, I've, I've been watching this, or I, I just finished watching that, that quarterback show on Netflix. And it was interesting because you see all the behind the scenes of these three quarterbacks. Patrick Mahomes is one of them. Fucking hated him coming into this. And mm-hmm. now he's one of my favorite. Like, I can't help but love the guy. He's one of my favorite players now. It's I mean, ter- I'm also a big fan I of the Muppets. It. I hate it. It hurts me to because I hate Kansas City. But. I will not say that I love him. I mean, no, granted, I've never seen the show, but I at least respect the fact that he's the best quarterback in the league. So like you watch the show, you're gonna fucking. He, he's I won't so watch genuine. the show because I don't just don't turn on Netflix. But but I get it. Regardless, he has a trainer that he works with. So kind of kind of took a page out of Tom Brady's like. Hey, cool. I'm going to do everything the team wants me to do with all the team people, but I have my own guy. Then I also want a witch doctor to get me into the best shape of my life. (laughs) Ironically, he's actually known this guy since he was four years old. It's crazy. But he talks about... Well, his dad was a professional athlete. Well, his his trainer talks about how they ramp up throughout the, the week. They have these three different workouts where they ramp up. And Wednesday or whatever the middle one is, uh, midweek, is supposed to be like game speed. And then the last one on Friday is like twice game speed or 25% more than game speed so that the game actually feels easier. So what you just said there about about how like game day was the easy day for mm-hmm. them, that's, I think that's kind of what we're going to see, and it's not just from perspective of practice. It's from, from a perspective of I expect you to be out in the community doing stuff, doing outreach, working with kids, doing whatever. I expect you to be going to class. I expect you to be doing these things. I think it's so interesting. He talks about how, you know, they can do all their schooling online and this and that, but we expect them to go to class. We expect them to get that interpersonal connection face-to-face. He talks a lot about that in multiple interviews. It's very cool. Hell, earlier today, Nebraska on Facebook and Twitter, they put out this six-minute video of what they and they labeled it as what's next and they capitalized the NE for Nebraska obviously on next but that's weird they they had you know they about half of it was some clips of you know practices whether it was spring game you know going into spring game or spring practices the spring game and then just off season stuff and then the other half was all community stuff like these players that were out like playing with kids and you know doing all these other things out in the community it's not just lip service it's a real thing that's important to these these coaching well, staff. It's that ranking that we talked about. Yes, the top ten percent. Yes, yeah, that, which I think is that, awesome, by the way. It's pride. It's bringing pride in, and it's it's putting but essentially health, healthy pride. Essentially, it's grading out how prideful should you be. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of how they're grading it out. It's healthy pride. Did you earn it this week? Yeah, yeah. Did you did you earn that N on your chest, that N on your helmet? Yep. I think it's cool as shit. It, it literally just gave me the goosebumps. So what, I love this shit. Kind of going back to the Big Ten media days. days. They're always hard. Sorry, <laughs> fuck off. I should say they're always ready. Sorry, Jed. Continue. Oh, always ready. <laughs> that's, that's a very different thing. <laughs> going back to the Big Ten media days, and I know we're talking a lot about what Coach Rule has said. Is there anything from the three players, Jeff Sims, Ethan Piper, or Luke Reimer, that stood out to you? One of the most fun things that I saw from all of it I don't know if it, if it was on Rule's cell phone or who it was, because I saw, I saw somebody else post it, but Rule took a microphone and acted like he was the guy well, interviewing. Into, it, it was kind of an off to this, It was literally just them two standing yeah, in front whatever. of the camera. But yeah. It looked like he was the reporter yeah, interviewing yeah. Ethan Piper. And he was like, he was like hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this <laughs> hypothetical. He goes, you're standing on the edge of a cliff. You've got 
me in one hand, and you've got Coach Raiola in the other yep. hand. Which you have to let go of one. Who and, you gonna let go is, of? Before he said you have you have to let go of one. <laughs> They're like no, giggling. No, to no, each immediately, other Ethan Pepper goes, "Don't do this to me, Coach. <laughs> don't do this to me, Coach. <laughs> don't make me don't make me say it out loud." And he's like, "You know what my answer is going to be?" <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He yeah. absolutely. And it was so funny because Coach, Coach was like, "He's like, yeah, I got, I got, I got, I got out of here." <laughs> well, no, and then and then uh, Rule goes right to the camera. He goes, "Camp's going to be real hard, right?" Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so to that, not only was it fun, it also felt confident to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they felt like they were there with purpose. And I I think that was the biggest tell for me. Not even necessarily what they said. Because what they said, a lot of it was kind of expected, yeah. at least from me. Yep. Something, but the way they said it was really what stood out. You know, some something something that, to stay on the Ethan Piper train. Um, by the our, way, I'm sorry. Producer. I'm not going to. I don't mean to insult Ethan Piper. But with the shaved head and the wispy mustache, he looks straight out of the Adams family. Uh, but these mustaches <laughs> got to go, man. Like, but it's just a generational dude, thing. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, mustaches <laughs> and mullets are in. We're back in like the Those early ears 90s that he has sticking shit. out yeah. like crazy with the shaved yeah. head. Oh, yeah. Like he looks straight out of the Adams family. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. I, it, the interview that our producer actually, uh, uh, Elijah, and they do on uh, Hail Varsity Radio, uh, they sat down with all all those guys. Okay. And... Uh, he talked a lot about the just kind of the connectivity and there's been it's kind of the same type of stuff we've been hearing. Um, they asked him specifically, you know, is is Coach Raiola as serious as he seems? Is he that hardcore? And you know, he he backed it up. He's like, yeah, he absolutely is. It's, he he it's did all that about on the that. panel on BTN, but it's yeah. all about family. It's yep. all about you know, we are brothers. They do everything together, and I, you know, we heard stuff like that last year too, but. I don't know if it was as backed up or if it was as heavily focused on because there were other expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know how the relationship with the previous uh, offensive line coordinator was. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But I, it, it seems to me like these dudes truly love yeah. Raiola. They some, do. some of that from previous from previous years has felt forced. Like, this is what you should well, go and say. Last year was his first year. So it was weird. Be, you know... It, and it's first year as a full time position coach. Well, it's something that I never played college football. Something that something that I something that I heard recently. I don't remember even where I heard it from. Was you know if if you're going to see a position coach get changed during someone's career, offensive line is the hardest one of any of them. Quarterbacks, I would, I would wide receivers, that. running backs, any of it. I would believe offensive that. line because techniques are different, and the fact that. Raiola, and, co and cohesiveness is key. Well, and that's a huge thing too. So that's why also when you see you know number of snaps of, of an offensive line that are actually together. Mm -hmm. I, it, after you're done with this, I have a question on the offensive line. But go ahead. Yeah, oh, we'll hold on to it. I will. That's you know I I think that was a huge thing. I really truly believed for at least <clears throat> at least for the first couple months that they only kept him to try and get Dylan. I, I really thought that that like, hey, maybe he's a good coach, maybe he's not. He's got a good background, good family history. Maybe, maybe ties not. to the university. Got it. We'll, I really we'll never thought really that was know. a big thing. But we've heard, we've heard since he's been retained. Rule we'll talk about he teaches the same style that I teach. Yep, he teaches the same style mm -hmm. that I've coached because he was an offensive line coach with the Giants. That's what Rule we'll did with the Giants before, before he ever got his head coaching experience at Temple. And even when he wasn't coaching offensive line, the guys that he's been around, he teaches the same style. Yeah, they all do the same yes. stuff. And there's apparently there's like basically three different styles of offensive line coaching that you do. This is what he wants to run. He's got a guy with good experience, NFL experience, now college experience. He's been here for a year, so he's already got some of that groundwork laid. I think it's going to be huge in the way that everything keeps the way that everything keeps being talked about. The way you keep hearing about Bryce Bryce Benhart, people are now talking about him as being, you know, a potential All American candidate. Mm -hmm. It's like the same Bryce Benhart that I've been busting balls and kicking <laughs> under fucking buses for the last two Which years. Which again, will go to my question in on the offensive line. Fucking pussy! Like, <laughs> prove me wrong, bro. Prove me wrong. Change it up. What's your question? So, I found this out earlier today. Because I didn't really do a deep dive on the players from each university that came to Big Ten Media Days. 
Ethan Piper was the only offensive lineman that came to Big Ten Media Days of all the teams. The only one. Yeah, you, you're looking and you, you, nobody else can see this, but BJ raises one eyebrow like, wait, what? That's pretty wild. Yeah. There was a lot there last year. But, I mean, there's, there's one. I know there was there's one from three Ohio players State. from each team. And yeah. Ethan Piper was the only offensive lineman that any team brought. Now, we have all watched Nebraska's offensive line over the last handful of years. It's not just last year, you know, just the last handful of years. And it's well, massively. We, we've watched them every year, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I specifically block, I block out that part of the screen. I'm trying to be games. relative to recent. I don't, but... I don't want to see those fatties <laughs> on the field. <laughs> yeah. I can't stand to look at those hippos. Now, we, we found out that Teddy Prochaska is good to go. You know, we were kind of worried about maybe him not kind of like last year where maybe he'd be a slow starter. They said he's good to go. So you got Teddy. He's 100% per- going into fall practice. Yes. We got Teddy Prochaska. Newelli's coming back from suspension. We got with e- massive things to prove. Yes. We got Ethan Piper, who started 10 games last year. We've. No matter what anybody wants to say about Bryce Benhart, we've all crushed him. Bryce anybody. Benhart. He has a lot of experience. We've got Turner Corcoran. That's five guys right there. Then we have Ben Scott coming in at center who has a Who's lot of experience. At center. Yeah. Like, are we maybe sleeping on our offensive line? I really think we are. And and that's – I was going to say this. I really think we are. I think that's going to be a major focus for me going into our offensive preview show. Yeah. Um, just really diving into – I. You're going to get into the numbers on, you know, how many snaps are returning, yeah. all that stuff. Game time. All those things I think are key. Shit, I could tell you that right now. I don't know that. I don't want to know. No, right I'm now. just saying. I don't know that there's a more important group going into this next year. 100% agree. Because of the things that I heard, you know, the other thing, the, the next thing that I was going to go to, we were talking about Ethan Piper, but I'm going to be honest with you guys, I need a drink. So let's pause up for a sec. Let's get <laughs> well, right back Just to real it. quick before we do that, because otherwise I'm going to lose this. I also have to pee. The, the, <laughs> the only real argument that I have against are we sleeping on them is what we saw in spring ball. Yeah. And now I know, I know. It was, it's spring and all that. That's literally the only, the only thing I can think of where... No, we're not sleeping on them. That's what we massive, get in the fall. There's been massive body changes this summer. Yeah. Massive body changes this and summer. So that's the only thing that I can think of is if they're still playing that same way, then no. All right, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, brothers. That's my. That was a half a second for all of you listening. Yes. But that's my other favorite we, sound. We did all the kinds show. of stuff while we were out. <laughs> Cheers. No, so we we kind of talked about Ethan Piper a little bit. Um, I loved the interview um, that Elijah and Chris did with um, Jeff Sims. He talked about, I think the biggest thing that he talked about was the fact that he's put on so much weight. He weighs more than he's ever weighed. Um, and that he understands he's need that to it's considering like, how much. Exactly. Yeah. That he understands it's because of the Good. durability that he Good. needs for the Big Ten. And because they're going to run him. They, this is no longer an Adrian Martinez like, well, you know, we want him, we want him to be mobile, but we're, we're not going to call a bunch of design stuff because we don't want to hurt him. We don't want to put him in, in harm's way a lot. There's a lot of teams out there, whether it be in college or in pro, that are worried about running their quarterback, that are worried about doing those things. I think it speaks both to the conviction they have in Jeff Sims and his training and his abilities, but it also speaks and trust. to it, well, in trust, but it also speaks to what they think of the guys behind him. We don't have Casey Thompson back there anymore, yep. but they still believe like, hey, we're going to run him. We're going to do what we need to do. We think this is the way to win games. If we lose him, we're, we're, conf- we're confident in the guys that we have behind him. And I, I love that. I absolutely love that. And the way he talked about it was... Well, you, you don't win afraid of losing players. Like, <laughs> no. Well, and he, he, he didn't even just talk about, oh, I'm putting on weight. He, he, he referenced his dietitian. He talked about his dietitian and, you know, how, how oh, if, if, he gets, if he gets a report that he got a pound on, he just knows it's going to make her happy and he's going to... He, that's, that's his excitement for the week. I'll tell you, one, one, of the, one of the other things that came... I mean, it was kind of weird, but it was at the same time, I'm like, I totally get it. 
Yes. One of the other things that came out from this week of the Big Ten Media Days is him talking about, you know, and we've talked about this before, where you don't have to be a captain to be a leader. Yeah. And whether he's a captain or not doesn't matter. He's going to be a leader. He specifically. He's a quarterback. He's gonna be he, a he went to into the locker room and like went to locker by locker. They have not only just their names at the top of the locker, but they also have a picture of the person's face. Where he went to learn everybody's face and everybody's not just last name, but first name. And he felt that that was important enough to take a special effort to go into the locker room and do all this stuff during spring practice. That because he specifically said, I cannot sit, sit there in a huddle and look at someone and tell them what to do when I don't know their name. That's some good initiative it's, right there. It's the yeah. small it's things huge. like that. It's huge. That's not. It's a huge thing, but it's a, a, it, but it's a small yeah. thing to do. Exactly. Some of the stuff that he's talked about, some of the things like that that he's talked about, he sounds a lot like things that I've heard Cam Newton say. Yeah. Not not that I'm trying to get into that because of the body comparison and the play type. Comparison. Or that he played for the Patriots because you're Is a that, Patriots fan. Hit it. I was gonna uh, say. <laughs> that's not even a Patriots <laughs> reference. I was I, gonna <laughs> say. <laughs> I hated him playing at the Patriots. He I was know, fucking I just because he was old and sucked. <laughs> he wasn't even old. He I just had sucked. taken him in his prime for sure. <laughs> he just sucked. He wasn't even old. He was 31. Whatever. He's old for he that just, play style. Uh, he, threw, he threw the ball to ground every time he saw a receiver. If he, Lamar Jackson at 31 will be the same way. I agree with you. If he never played that. for the Patriots, I wouldn't have brought it up. I just had to say I that. Can, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> but, but leadership in the way that Cam Newton led... A lot of the same things I'm hearing from Jeff Sims. Yeah. I'm glad he's not following his fashion tips, but if he follows his, <laughs> his <laughs> if he follows his, if he follows his his leadership ability, I mean there here's here's one thing I'll say about Cam at the Patriots. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> the team loved him. The team loved him and Belichick loved him. And for Belichick to openly say, I I, I have full trust in him, I love him. When you're playing as shitty as you are, for him to still have your back, that's, I mean, that's amazing. Yep. And so, regardless of the play on the field, his leadership seems like he's, I don't know if he's following his stuff or if, if that's just like a, a general thing, but the, the whole going to the locker rooms thing, or going in the locker room and doing the, the locker by locker, I've heard Cam Newton say the same shit. And so, I think that's huge. Maybe he looks up to him because they do have a very similar build. They have a very similar play style. I don't know. But if you're going to emulate somebody, a Heisman Trophy National Championship winner is a pretty good one to emulate. Yeah. Well, and, and I've, I've compared him, Jeff Sims, his freshman year. I've said it on this podcast multiple times. I've said it in public probably to you guys multiple times. He reminded me his freshman year of, of Robert Griffin, speaking of Heisman Trophy winners and all that stuff. He wore, he wore the same number. He had, like, the arm sleeve. He, like, literally, if you go just look at... Why do you think Rule love, <laughs> loves for, him so much? For, <laughs> forget his... For, well, That's a good Rule, point, Rule honestly. Did, Rule didn't coach him at Baylor, Robert Griffin, but... I mean, but I get what you're he had trying to say. He a lot of tape on him. Yeah. But if you look at specifically Jeff Sims' best year, which was his freshman year at Georgia Tech... Everything about him, number, size, hair coming out of the the helmet, all those things. You look at him and go like, Jesus Christ, that's Robert Griffin 2.0. Yeah. Like, you could, he could sling the ball a mile. I'd love that if he could manifest that this year. I, God, that'd be great. I hope to God, you know, kind of going back to the offensive line thing. Starts with knowing the players' names and faces, I guess. Yeah. He, uh, basically, the big, biggest thing is, with Jeff Sims, is he understands his role. Yeah. Again, whether or not he's a captain or not is completely irrelevant, in my opinion. He understands his role as a leader. Well, and that, that and that's what me, he's doing. We that, don't even know how they're going to pick captains. It doesn't matter, but that's my point. It doesn't matter. There's yeah. only so many captains. You need more leaders than that on a team. No, he I, I is agree. a leader no matter I, what the hell happens. I guarantee you, yes, that's a good thing to go and do that. But that's not the only thing that he's doing to become the quarterback for this team. Yeah, well, and so Jed mentioned it two episodes ago. He he talked about that ten percent. Talked about how Jeff Sims has been on there damn near every week. Yeah, so 
that's that's a huge step. One of these days, I'm going to go back to each one of those weeks and calculate who's been on there every week. But I know I Jeff Sims is going to be on there. I think we should lot. start looking for it and, and share that on our page. I, w- I will. I'll do I that in the next couple of days. I, I would assume you're going to do that because through con- the season. They put right? so much content. I know. I know. But, that was, but, but I'll search it out. But yeah. Uh, Je- Jed's got a nose for this sort of Jeff's, thing. Jeff Sims, as far as that, as far as everything else you talked about, it was very standard. I thought like it was. Wasn't anything I wouldn't expect to hear out of the quarterback. Um, so, so we talked to Ethan Piper. We talked Jeff Sims. Anything come out defensively from Luke Reimer that stood out to you? The biggest thing that stood out to me was how excited he was about how active and attacking this defense is going to be. It goes back to the confidence. He, he, for sure. made, he made the correlation between what we were doing under Chenander and what we were doing last year and prior to what this is going to be. He said a lot of a lot of what we were doing prior was wait for it to come to me. Yep. Wait for it to come to me. We were not putting our foot on their throat, if we will. One of the things Reimer said specifically to that extent was we don't want it to be second and four. We want it to be second and twelve. Yeah. Like it was Yeah. I mean he was kind of tough to follow on a lot of stuff he talked about. He, he's just kind of a goofy dude. He reminds me actually a lot of Garrett Nelson last year. Just, I'm very excited that I'm out here to play football. Let's fucking go. <laughs> but at the same time, it, it, it's he's obviously good. He, you know, he's he's going to be bordering, you know, legendary status with number of total career tackles. And he, things he, like could, that he could the end, end, the, end his career at number two all-time yeah. tackles. I mean, he could end it at number one, no, but it's going to take a lot. He, yeah. He'd I pray have, to God he ends it at number one. He'd is have to have the greatest right season of all time to get number one over Barrett Rude, but he very well could end his career at number two all time tackles. Yeah. And I, I just, I think, I think he gave me a lot of. I guess the easiest way to say it is confidence, but I, I think he oh, eased my mind a little bit because I've, I've talked about it before that. Tony White's the only guy that I don't hear talked about a lot. I yep. don't hear a lot from him. It has a lot to do with the fact that he's not on social media, and I've, I've acknowledged that before. But at the same time, you hear things, you feel things from about, especially like Garrett McGuire and Coop and and some of those guys, Knighton. I mean, Knighton's active as fuck. Yep. Um, you know, it's it, it fully it, it, huge things. But... I I've had this like question mark in the back of my head like he's not part of the family he's not part of the the background you know is he just not as invested or not into it as the rest of the coaching staff or is he just quieter mm-hmm. and I think he's all what, business what Luke Reimer talked about actually had a lot of easing effect on me because it seemed like he had the same love and the same feel for him. That I'm hearing about all the yeah, other players and all the other coaches. Mean, that means the players aren't seeing that same uneasiness same that you're yeah. seeing. Yeah, and it's it, a lot of it is just living in the the activity and all the media that we have now exposed. You know, if this was '99, we wouldn't we wouldn't think any differently about rule than we think about Tony White, just because of the fact that we wouldn't see all the shit. Yeah. We wouldn't see all this stuff. Yeah. Other than he's the head coach and he's the DC. Definitely wouldn't be a plethora of emojis to sift through <laughs> as far as what's going on. I, I think my biggest thing that came out of Luke Reimer was, and I brought this up with uh, my buddy, and I'll call him Titan Mike just to piss him off, uh, which, by the way, we need to get him on one of our Titan episodes. Mike. Wait, is it Titan Mike or is it Loose Mike? Loose Mike's in Florida. Titan Mike's here. Okay. I mean, we, he goes Casey by... Mike. He goes go. by Casey Mike, but no, nah, he's a Titan fan. Titan um, Mike! <laughs> We need to get him on one of our shows, but tighter Mike. <laughs> we got loose Mike and tighter Mike. He, he wishes, but uh, I said tighter oh, Mike, not tight Mike. The Jets friends. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like Luke Reimer, some of the things that he talked about was, I'm done with talking about the three three five, because the way that it comes across to me is that it's almost a po- positionless defense. Every you, you can call it. A, it's all about attack, attack, attack. Bingo. Regardless of where you started. <laughs> exactly. Now, granted, it's you an know, amoeba. Granted, an Elijah Judy at three hundred pounds is going to 
only going to be on the defensive line. It's not like he's going to be positionless and he's going to line up at safety. That's not what I'm trying to say. God, that'd be terrifying. <laughs> no, fuck no, I'm not taking that. Oh, I'll come take, on. Take this Jaeger over here. All right, cheers. <laughs> I'm sorry, can we just for a second think about a 300-pound safety? <laughs> you almost spit that I out. I almost spit caramel-flavored vodka all over the table. No, but like I'm done with the whole 3-3-5 stuff. Th- this defense, we have learned that, or at least we've been told, I guess we haven't been learned, we haven't learned this yet until games happen. This is a pos- positionless defense. We're going to throw guys out there that are going to make plays, and we're going to see what happens. And and not just see what happens as we're just winging it. I, I trust what we're doing here. It's something, Matt, this is actually something Jed has been t- saying, this phrase, over and over again last, Uh-oh. last three seasons. Uh-oh. Get the best players <laughs> on the fucking field. Yeah. Hey, that's you've been what listening. This, that, that's, what, <laughs> that's what this I defense thought for sure does. it was going to be something about cock. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Will you, will you guys just do me a favor and like keep your personal lives off the show? Like, no, I'm, I'm. I know sometimes I talk about my wife, or I talk about like I've got a baby coming, or like I got married last season. Like, I'm not talking about how I, like I'm in love with my co-host. Like, you guys, just come on. No, I'm really excited about. Hey, this. for once, I actually have a girlfriend on this uh, this season. So, <laughs> the same name as my girlfriend. Yeah. Don't look, don't read it. Yeah. Name. Oh, it's so weird. You guys started dating the same name girl. <laughs> But I'm just thankful neither one of them probably listen to the show because no. this, this would be so awkward. Well, I, know mine sure. do, I know mine doesn't. For she sure. doesn't give a shit about sports. So. Yeah. It's no, weird, the, weird for you to date a girl like that. The Whatever. 335 Husker Amoeba is going to be fun to, fun yeah. to watch this year. I, I, think the, I think the biggest thing that I picked up from any of them actually talking about it and including, I'm, I'm, I'm still throwing in, like I said, the, the Damon Benning interview. Throwing in what I heard Rule talk about for that stuff, because he was asked directly, you know, what is it? Like, what mm-hmm. is the difference? And he really he really said, he goes, honestly, it's in, I actually heard this. It's more from, of a concept. I actually heard this from Adam Carriker, too, this last week. Um, it's more of like, it's basically like the 3-4, but more agile and a little more interchangeable. Yeah. I've it's also, basically a 3-4, a little more scary because the whole focus is... Absolute chaos and disruption. Yeah. It's it's attack, 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 which all we've seen out of our defenses since Bo Pelini was here, all we've seen out of our defenses, sit back, wait for him to get here. Let's try and wrap up and make yeah. solid tackles. Position and Let's don't. not give up the big play. Luke Reimer specifically said, you know, it's not a defense where we just stand on our heels the entire time. And you know what? Which was it, kind it, of a it, shot it to the previous result. defense, but whatever. <laughs> until, until we have some some development and until we have some better players probably yep. on the roster, it might result in giving up some bigger plays. Yep. Which a few years back under Mike Riley, that was a big bugaboo for us was, well, they're always giving up the bigger plays. Well, guess what? We haven't sacked as many times yeah. as that season. Not just Mike Riley. Look, that happened the, under Pelini. The, Look at the Wisconsin games under Pelini. Like, yeah, that was a different story. The 3-3-4. Three, three, Pelini is a defense attacked a little bit more than what we saw under Riley or I'm Frost. just talking about the big plays happened a lot. Yes. I, well, the 3-3-4 three, 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 has a lot of opportunity for confusion. Now, whether or not it's confusion three, three, four, the four, would, the defense, would be weird because that's only 10 players on the field. Whatever. But yeah. It, <laughs> Whether it's confusion on the defense, so three, three, four, one, or confusion on the offense, that's the key, because you have so many different schemes that you can show. You can have five guys on the line. You can have yeah. six guys on the line. You can, three guys on the line, obviously. And so, it's it's whether or not they actually have their assignments and the ability to get to where the ball is. Mm-hmm. That's the key. Yep. I think more than anything, the way that Tony White runs it, it's almost more of a. I'm just going to give the opposing coaches something else to talk about this week. Absolutely. It, it seems like it's not nearly as big of a deal to everyone else who finally wraps their head around it. And I loved in the Damon Benning interview, he talked about it, and he goes, you know, what? one of the one of the biggest things that I've learned from my time at Temple and Baylor and in the NFL to now, he said the hugest thing was last year I was forced to hire a bunch of assistants that weren't part of the family that weren't weren't used to coaching with me that and and he said 
He basically said, and I'm, I'm, I'm shrinking this down because he talked about it for like five minutes, but basically I micromanage the shit out of them. Every day I'm asking them, well, that seems weird to me. Why are you doing that? That seems weird to me. Why are you doing that? He said, that's one thing I learned when I, when I brought Tony in. He's not part of the family, or he wasn't part of the family at the time. He is now, but he wasn't part of my coaching tree. He'd never played for me. He's not experienced with me. I had some experience, like, you know, like I knew him, but I was never, like, really close to him. And the big thing that he changed from his time at Carolina, the time his time at Baylor and Temple, to now was, he, and, and he said, maybe I'm getting older, maybe I'm getting softer. But I brought him in all the way through spring, just let him put in his stuff. Sure, I had questions. Sure, I had concerns. Sure, I was thinking something else could be changed. He's still learning. But, That's the big thing. But I let him put in his stuff, and you know what? If I have questions about something, at the end of the week, I'll ask him. I'm not going to hammer him all the time. I'm not going to be constantly up his ass about stuff. He, Rule didn't say that. He wouldn't talk like that anyway. I, I know what you mean. But it kind of feels nice to know that coach, is, coach Rule is still learning himself. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, that's, that's some of these guys, some of these guys in these head, be learning. Some of these guys in these head positions, no matter who the hell you are. Bo whether, Pelini. Scott well, Frost. No, but I mean, like, even like a Nick Saban, like the greatest coach of all time in college football, at least. They're still learning. Like, they admit that they're still learning. They Absolutely. They're not going to sit here and say, I know everything, so this is my way or the highway. You know what Nick Saban does? He, he brings, brings in, in other he, head coaches. Well, he brings he in other head coaches. But he brings in, especially on the offensive side of the ball, he has brought in probably every single different style yep. under the sun since he's been in Alabama. Lane mm-hmm. Kiffin, he, Steve I'll, Sarkeesian, I would bet you he, Bill O'Brien. I would mm-hmm. bet you he has a championship from every different style of offense. Basically. And you know what he hasn't done? Micromanage them into oblivion. Yep. He's, he, a, he's, he's the greatest college football coach of all time. Sometimes because he, he didn't need to with those goddamn defenses. So, well, but at the same time, like... Yeah, some of the, some of his earlier offenses weren't that impressive, and he put a lot of players in the NFL on offense that never did anything. Yeah, but the last eight years, players that come out of Alabama at wide receiver, at running back, at quarterback, they're all huge. They're yeah. they're wildly successful. But just one. But just one. What yeah. round? I think it was the ninth round. I can't really tell. I'm watching it on my computer. Sorry. What, what round had the <laughs> least amount of money on it? He, he's not probably <laughs> not. Not that we're going to break this down, but he's kind of like the last three rounds. He's been picking him apart. Like it well, just, it, that's it, always how those I fucking know. Crawford fights. This is not a Bud Crawford no, podcast. No, no, I'm just every, everything. First of all, I know you're a Creighton hater, so you, yeah. in, in, in we all have our opinions on Bud Crawford as, as yeah. a human being because we've met <laughs> yep. him personally. As a human being compared to a fighter, they're very <laughs> different. I'll tell you that much. From yeah. a fighter's perspective, it's kind of cool to think like the best boxer in the world is from Nebraska. You're right. And from Omaha, You're Nebraska. Right. Like, it's, it's just a cool thing. Uh, but I, everything I saw all week was like, no. From like major sports pundits was basically like like betting guys. No, whatever uh, whatever round Bud probably no, put his money on. I don't know is, for sure, the by the way. Yeah. He's going to knock him I, out. I, I, <laughs> so I'm looking at an illegal feed. Um, I think it said round nine, but it was somewhere right around there. But anyway. It, uh, it's never going to be in the first three rounds. Yeah. No. And then after that, it's literally whatever the least amount of money is on usually. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. This, this gives you an idea as to when we're recording this. Yeah. <laughs> so timeline, you've got to shoot out. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck was I saying? Like, what were we talking I don't, about? I, don't, I think we're about to move on to the next topic anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever. Sorry, it, it, it is what it is. No, I. Media, I have media no days overall, they were fun this year. I, you know, I mean, even listening to, I only listened to, I, uh, I listened to all of day two coaches. I did not get a chance to go to day one coaches. So I got PJ Fleck. I got Jim Harbaugh. I got Mike Loxley. I got Luke Fickle. Um. Who's T- the, Tim who's Allen? The, is Loxley the t- new Tim guy Allen. at Purdue? Tim Allen's on. <laughs> I got Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, boys. <laughs> yeah. Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, Buzz Lightyear came into the show. <laughs> Above Sa- and beyond or Sa- whatever. Santa Claus like. came in yeah. and gave a presentation. <laughs> Tom Allen. But Starlink, we're confused. So I did not see the first day, but uh, yeah, uh, PJ Fleck was super butthurt about the news that came out. 
As he uh, should have been. God, he was, God. It was bad. <laughs> what it was a bad. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. He in literally that had that this look on. on his face the whole time he was talking. Like, God, I just want to fuck those guys up. <laughs> I just want to fuck them right in their faces. <laughs> That's what he, like, he literally looked like. And, and culture, culture, culture. And he, yeah. you've, you've said, and I haven't listened to him as much as it's, you have. But it, You've said that's always been his shtick. It's always but at been. the same time, it was like, here's a story about how our culture is awesome. But it stands out now Here's with a story the news. about how yes. our culture is awesome. Because yeah. guess what? I had this guy that isn't, he's not here anymore. This was a while back. So he might be one of my former players, too. It was, such a, a, it was awesome culture, right? The fact that his the very first question that was asked to him, say, hey, coach, how you doing? And his response is, I'm elite. How are you? <laughs> it's it's culture. God and- damn it. Why is this not two weeks from now when we have video going? Because the look on Jed's face, I'm elite. How are you? It was lit- it was like Buzz Lightyear was here in the room. And you spitting out almost your drink when I said that. Yeah. No, that's his response. Everything is culture and everything is I'm doing elite. That's the response to everything. Yeah. Right. I, I I don't know if you know this, Coach, but that's not proper English. No, I mean, it's just being a douche. It's just weird. He's weird. It's period. weird, but He's it's weird. not he, a problem, which is why, that's why everything with, that went on was just... That's why with the I news that came out and, and people, the former players using the word occult status, I'm like... That doesn't surprise me because he's weird as fuck. Yeah, of course and he's it's a all cult. into the sayings. Yeah. Yes. So I was thinking about this. I mean, the- hell, we we bash Scott Frost for a lot of things that are highly justified, and one of the things that he always talked about is like, I'm not into sloganisms, which was a direct shot at PJ Fleck. Oh yeah. PJ Fleck is all about sloganisms. He took shots at PJ Fleck the whole time he yeah. was a coach. No, they both didn't like well, each other. When so. he wasn't taking shots, he was taking shots. Yeah. Oh no, he was. Taking shots. It wasn't not taking <laughs> shots. He was taking shots. Not like our shots that we've been taking. No, I'm saying when he wasn't but... taking our shots, he was taking those shots. Speaking of shots, <laughs> do we need another one? Yeah. Do we challenge accepted? What do you mean? As Matt need? refills his drink, he's he's already gonna have the the pop. Take the bottle. Yeah, we're all doing bottles. Hell Love yeah! It. Bottle drop. God, we're almost a month away, guys. Oh, I can't fucking oh, wait. We're all going. Well, are you going up to yep, Minnesota? I'm game? going down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Going up. Well, I'm we're going down. Now, on now, going now we're all sitting in the same hotel. We're too. all in the same hotel. We're going to be about three miles from the stadium, if I remember we're correctly. Be a half that a is. block from Lions Pub. Oh, I can't fucking wait. It's, uh, well, it's, it's as far as the stadium. Actually, we're we're staying downtown. We're only in like a mile away. It's okay. a bigger walk than it looks on the map. Oh. But we're a half a block from the train station. That's a dollar to fucking ride cool. there. It'll be great. No, it, but back to big, back to big, big Big Ten media days. Wow, get it, get it, get it, get it. that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not shots hitting hard. I think one of the biggest things for me that I saw outside of everything we've talked about was when we look at Matt Rule and the way that he was so excited to talk to everybody, so excited to talk about the you know. I don't think enough can be made of him talking about how we need to earn the right to be respected and kind of back to that whole, this is Nebraska. This is not, you know, this is not Iowa who's been really good for a while. I'm going to give Iowa props right now and say they've been really good for a while. You know, one of our, one of our cousins showed up to the, Family reunion today. He's he's rocking an old school Iowa Hawkeyes shirt. He's from Des Moines. We're still gonna blur that out when we post those yeah. pictures. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel highly like not comfortable sitting here. I want to leave right now. The fact that you're giving respect to Iowa. No, so I'm, fuck I'm giving off. respect. I'm giving respect. <laughs> Can you wrap <laughs> this up. Move on. I'm, I'm giving respect. Who are you rooting for right now? No, just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving respect to Iowa for the fact that they've been no. pretty good. They've I've been, done the same thing. They've been Bo Pelini-esque for yes. the last yes. you know, 10 oh, years. That's a perfect ex- example. Yeah, they really good. have been. You know, 9, 10 wins is pretty average they for beating them. Beating nobody. Beating nobody. Well, actually, that's not true because they've, they've won some good games at Iowa late night. They've won some good games. Cool. That's more than Bo Pelini Some of those say. times that they've won those one big they were, games. They were like they win you, seven games that year. They were so. like if you combine Bo Pelini and Mike Riley, it was like the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, give give respect to them. 
Give respect to Minnesota winning nine games the last two years. Give respect to Illinois on the rise and maybe – it's a little I, weird that I, they I really didn't do. have an offensive lineman oh, there. And Illinois this is hiring, hiring Wisconsin's Jim Leonard as an analyst is ah, a dude, big I deal. I think that's way less than you're making a deal. Oh, I think it's a Maybe big deal. Maybe he's got family in the Tell area. me why it's a big deal. He can't coach. He can't be there on game day. But he's you can a now. analyst. No, the analyst thing is different now. No, you, but you, they, can't give, they can't coach. They actually can. They, no, no, they can't. It's changed. They yes, just they talked about it yesterday. They just talked about it on... BTN, they talked about it. You guys want to explain what's going on here? Jim Leonard, the guy who should have gotten the Wisconsin head coaching job. I don't know about should have. But one of the best defensive arguable. coordinators in the country. A lot of players wanted him as the head coach. Okay. He would he would have any D coordinator in the NFL or college football position that's open, he'd have an interview. Whether or not he's hired, that's a different thing. But he'd have an interview. Is there any reason why he went to be an analyst in a... The buyout that he got for getting fired from Wisconsin apparently was enough and significant enough that he didn't want to disrupt that. So from a financial standpoint, he's not working this year. Not working. How does that work as an analyst, then? It's... Well, analysts don't make dick. They make like fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 a year. Still working. That's, it's, that's... Yeah, but that's off... You offset your salary... By your new salary. Oh, I see what you're so saying. So all that money that he's getting from whatever the fuck it is They're from Wisconsin. They're just taking $50,000, $60,000 out yeah. of it. And so for so, some reason he decided he didn't want to, you know, he had he had opportunities. Is this just him at, staying in the game then? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah. I don't, how long does I don't he have foresee to, him. How long does he have to do this for until he can get back into it? I don't know. That's kind of depending maybe, on his contract. Maybe no, there had been maybe no he's talk eyeballing about him. a spot at Illinois that he wants, like the head coaching job, because or the defense coordinator job. Because Bielema's going to go where? He's not going anywhere. Yeah, but he he's always not going anywhere, and he's switched schools four times in the last twelve years. Three. That's my but point. But he got fired at Arkansas. That's my point. He's not doing good enough at Illinois to move up. No, he. He he's at Illinois for the foreseeable future. Yeah, but that's okay. something that I said. I don't understand. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, rank how the Big Ten West is going to end up. Nobody's given mass respect to the fact that Bielum is in his third year at Illinois. I realize they lost some good talent. They lost our D coordinator. You got the Big Ten West. You got the top possible two. I think it'll just really just one based on schedule. But you got the po- top possible two, and then you've got a hodgepodge of like five, and then you have Northwestern at the very bottom. Who the fuck ends so up you, at number three? Think, I don't you know. You think Illinois is not in the top two? No. No, they're they're replacing a lot. They got two defensive backs that went in the I think the first round of the NFL. Yeah, draft. but those guys were no line before, before he got they, there. They're they're, they're they're replacing the quarterback. They're replacing the running back. They're replacing yeah, those the guys best were no linebacker names when he got there. No, but the, but it's who they were right now. Yeah, but he's a great coach. He's who that's who made them. I'm just saying, they're replacing a lot on that team. I think that Including Illinois analyst, is in the apparently. hodgepodge group of five. In the three through six range. Uh, maybe. I'm not going to so. say Illinois is going to end up at six. They're not. But I'm just saying. I just keep seeing stuff where mix. Michigan State's still three. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. They're not three. With what they lost. No. Well, no. But even on that side, you got Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State. Michigan State's not three. I don't the, know why I'm thinking Michigan East. State's on our side. They're not. I think you're ahead of the schedule change. Yeah, You're right. But, yeah, Michigan State's not three on that side. I think what I'm thinking of is our schedule this year. That's what I'm thinking of. But we don't play Michigan State. Yes, we do. We do? Yes. When? I don't know. Let's pull the schedule. <laughs> Pretty positive we play Michigan State. I've had enough shots of Jaeger that I'm brain farting on our schedule. Oh, so. wah, wah, wah. So Big Ten media days is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately... I think I think Big Ten Media Days was a massive success. Yeah, I agree. It's it's gonna it's gonna keep me hard for the next thirty two days. I'm gonna have to see my doctor <laughs> a lot. Uh, we oh we do play Michigan State <laughs> November fourth. <4th. laughs> I that's told you, come on, more. motherfucker. It's Why the fuck more. would I even be looking at it? I don't know. I forgot because Bacino's going to that game because he 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 always tells me he's like I got an extra ticket for you if you want to go. East Lansing, yeah. What? Why? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Because it's Bacino. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, he had to have like 
one of those in a bed or something. That's no. weird. Love you, Anthony, but no. Yeah, I, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't think he listens to the show. <laughs> I think he probably loads it up and he's like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll listen to the first two seconds. No, and it's done. An- Anthony li- loads the show up and goes, well, I'll just invite them out to the bar and I'll just talk to them. Like, I why do I have to listen to this? <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be as focused. It's not going to be as fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Big Ten Media Days was a fucking riot. Matt Rule is a king. I think it was a big success. Big success. It helps that we didn't have any drama. What? Not just the Minnesota stuff, but also like Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan stuff oh, that's man. going on. I, which all those that's things fucking trash. I agree with you. I'm Did just you saying see the suspension. They're only suspending him for the games. He can still coach all week long. Yeah, and it's he's only suspended for the games. The four nonsense first, games yeah, on their four schedule. Games exactly. that they're, don't they're, don't they're four matter. like starting season, which are bullshit games. Yeah. yeah. This little uh, Herbie the fucking gnome could fucking win those games. I'm just saying, we had zero drama coming into this. Now, granted, we had the Coach Wager thing happen. You have a a first-year head coach. Now, we had Coach Rule and the players talk on Thursday. The Wager thing actually happened on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. But broke on Friday. You're right. I'm just saying, we didn't have anything. Those guys all knew it already happened, and there was still no drama. We didn't have anything at Big Ten Media Days to bring us drama. Mm-hmm. So it was a very comfortable situation at Big Especially Ten Media Days. Especially with the rest Days. of the stuff going on around the conference. Yes. So. That, that's why it was so successful for us. Well, not that wasn't why. It was so successful for us because Coach Rule is the fucking man. Yeah. And the culture going on in Nebraska right now is something to be excited about. And this may be the most unbelievable night in Cornhusker football history. 